uh, started the recording, so I can now. Okay. okay. And I hope you all can uh, you all can hear me as well. Yeah, we can hear you. All right. Okay. So it is my pleasure to welcome all of you uh, to our uh, is this fourth uh, Physics General Club meeting, and uh, thank you all for joining, participating. I just want to remind you quickly of the goals of the general club. So the general club is you targeted towards grad students, so we can uh, learn more about the current research in science. We can engage critically with different literature, and uh, we can share skills on how we dissect and analyze uh, different research papers. And most importantly, is that you, you have an opportunity to improve your presentation skills. Uh, many of people here who are in the PhD path, you will know it's difficult to find a job if you don't develop your presentation skills. So uh, with that being said, I'd like to uh, request that if you're interested in presenting, please send me an email or Abby or Kushi or Shiva and just let us know if you are interested in presenting and uh, we will put you in the schedule. All right, so without any further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce Shiva Agawal. Uh, and his uh, topic today is very interesting. Uh, it won recently the three minute competition. So it is a hot topic, uh, like his nickname. Uh, so Shiva, go ahead. Uh, all right. First of all, thanks a lot to MQ, uh, and also thanks a lot to all of you that you all came today. Uh, uh, so let me first of all share my uh, presentation to uh, share the slide so you can see. Um, so okay. So I hope you can see the presentation slides and. Um, so first of all, uh, apologies for picking up this uh, paper because it's a, a little complex research paper. And actually, it's this research paper is, is part of a series of uh, papers uh, came in the for this particular model that we will be discussing today. And the very first model came in 2010. So this was a little complex. Also, I had to uh, leave a lot of information and also I had to pester Professor Famiano so I could prepare for this uh, uh, paper today. Okay. All right, so let us uh, start with some overview. First of all, there will be background and then we will have some introduction Then we will look at the, some different models of amino acid chirality. And then we will go to the discussion part of this uh, presentation. Okay, so let me first of all ask you a very simple question. Uh, are you left-handed or right-handed? And also let me open a poll for you so you can you can just answer this question. So I hope you can see the the poll in your on your, on your screens and you can answer. All right. So I can now share my uh, poll results with all of you. I hope you can see that you, uh, I guess all of you are, are, are right-handed. Uh, but what if I tell you that you all are left-handed? Uh, I guess you must be a little puzzled. I'm not trying to topple any, so, any symmetry in this meeting room, but what if the nature has already done that for you and you all are left-handed? Let's try to understand this, this mystery of the symmetry in this uh, talk and in this research paper, which has been uh, discussed uh, First of all, let's let's have some background of this topic. Uh, so on your uh, left, you can see uh, Lewis Pasture, and he because of him we can keep dairy products in our home a little bit longer. He did one more thing for us in 1840s. He first discovered chirality in the tartaric acids. Uh, so the word chirality is derived from the Greek word uh, chire, which means hand. Okay. So if you look at your hands, then they are made up of five fingers, which are the same. But what actually happens is that uh, even, even they are made up of five fingers, 
the orientation of the fingers in your hand is different and you cannot stack your hands if you try to do do that and your hands are mirror images of each other similarly we have we have some molecules which are chiral molecules and they have the same atoms but the orientation of these atoms in these molecules is different and these chiral molecules are both left handed and right handed and we call them enantiomers okay with that let's move to, to the the introduction part of our uh, presentation okay uh, so uh, we have amino acids amino acids are the molecules of life and these molecules are chiral uh, we have about 20 different types of uh, of amino acids and with the exception of glycine all of them are chiral so these amino acids are everywhere because they combine to form proteins any living organism you see including you your pet your food we have amino acids and we have proteins and, and proteins are made up of amino acids. So we have this formula, first of all, in the research paper, which is an enantiomeric axis, EE, which is defined as, uh, as you can see on our screen, where NL is the number of left-handed enantiomers and ND is the number of right-handed enantiomers. So when, when amino acids are prepared in lab, they are both left-handed and right-handed. EE would be zero in this case, half of the, uh, uh, amino acid would be left-handed and half of them would be right-handed. But for Siva, amino acids. Siva, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. do you mean by the left-handed amino acid? Like means the orientation in the left side or can you a little bit describe that? Uh, so we actually we have if you see the structure of amino acids, they will be there will be difference in the orientations. Like uh, it does not re really matter which what you mean by left or right. It's, it actually matters that you have two different forms of amino acids. And they will be like mirror images of each other. Maybe I can show you one image after this uh, presentation, so you can get a, a bit more idea. The point is, uh, that have to, I, I was just curious, like if if that uh, left-handed and right-handed means the folding direction of protein, or um, something like that. So there are like different uh, atoms in the in the amino acid because amino acid is a molecule. Like we have nitrogen uh, atom, we have carbon atom, we have we have oxygen atom. So the the arrangement of these atoms will be different and they will be different in a way that you, that uh, the left-handed amino acid and right-handed amino acid will be mirror images of each other, just like our, our hands. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, so for earth amino acid, the EE is one, which means that the earth amino acid, any, anything you see which is living on, on earth is <clears throat> left, uh, is left-handed. All right, so and now this is are trying to understand or maybe the scientists are trying to understand that why actually this happened and that's why we have some models developed for amino acid chirality. Uh, so very first model is creating amino acid chirality from circularly polarized light. Uh, as we all know that circularly polarized light has electric vectors going in the circular directions and we have two different circularly polarized light. One is right circularly polarized light and one is left cir circularly polarized light. So it makes sense that CPL can be a candidate for amino acid chirality selection. So there's a model which suggests a mechanism that can produce amino acid EE through CPL in the ultraviolet range in the inter interstellar space. One good thing about this model is that this model is experimentally verifiable. Also, amino acids are shown to produce an EE with light in UV range in the lab. So it's a, it's a, it's a good thing. This model is going in the right direction. We also have, uh, we also know that interstellar CPL is thought to have short wavelength, which, pro which can provide the energy re region in which chirality can change. And there are very large areas of CPL in star forming regions are found. So everything is going good, but one thing is that this model does not suggest why physical conditions select one chirality over another in different regions, because we have both uh, circularly polarized light in the space, right circularly polarized light and left circularly polarized light. So this is why this model has some issues that uh, it does not tell us exactly why physical condition would select one chirality over another. Uh, we also have uh, another model which is creating amino acid chirality via weak interactions. So first of all, what are weak interactions? Weak interactions show parity violation. You can relate parity violation with the mirror image. If you have uh, uh, interaction going on, then, you, then if you can observe its mirror image, then we say parity is conserved. But for some reactions, parity is not conserved. You cannot have the mirror image of this reaction. And this uh, experiment was conducted by Wu. 
and in 1956, and we saw that parity is violated in the in the weak interactions. So due to these parity violations, weak interactions also seem to be an obvious candidate to produce chiral selective molecular destruction. Um, also, these interactions involve neutrinos, and these are called weak interactions. So in any nutrition in, in, in any interaction, if you see neutrinos involved, it's a weak interaction. And these weak interactions are mediated by weak forces, and they uh, happen through the weak mediating quanta, which, which are W and Z bosons. So these interactions include beta decay, inverse beta decay, electron capture. These All these interactions include uh, neutrinos. So there are several models which are discussed in the paper, but they could not show how beta decay produced chiral selective molecular destruction. Uh, so this is how some of these molecules, the, some of these models are not going in the, in the, in the, in the right direction which we want them to go. Now we have the SNAP model, which is the main model discussed in the research paper. And it's an acronym, acronym which stands for Supernova Neutrino Amino Acid Processing Model. And this model suggests that, that the chirality of amino acid could be established in the magnetic field during supernova explosions via processing uh, by the anti-neutrinos. So that's why you have the name called Supernova Neutrino Amino Acid Processing Model. Uh, one thing to note about anti-neutrinos is that anti-neutrinos, they belong to the lepton class. So we have uh, anti-neutrino from the leptons and they have their spin and momentum always in the same direction. They have a definite helicity. So when spin and momentum are in the same direction, you call these particles right-handed. For anti-neutrinos, it is different. We have spin and momentum in the opposite direction. So this is something which we need to note that anti-neutrinos are always right-handed. Also, the anti-neutrinos are assumed to interact with nitrogen nuclei in this model because nitrogen because amino acids have nitrogen nuclei. And the nuclei as, are assumed to be oriented by exploding star's magnetic field. So you can see this reaction, which has uh, nitrogen, 14 nitrogen, interacting with neutrino, an anti-neutrino, and producing carbon nuclei and a positron. At the heart of this equation, we have inverse beta decay, in which proton is combining with anti-neutrino and giving us a neutron and a positron. So this is what the fundamental uh, inverse beta decay reaction and the inverse beta de decay reaction was first observed at Savannah, uh, power, uh, at Savannah River plant by Coburn and Reins, very famous, famous Coburn and Reins uh, neutrino experiment. Okay, now the strength of, the, of this interaction is governed by conservation of spin quantum number. So let's talk about spin, but actually uh, how we can look at those different spins. So 14N, which has odd number of neutrons and odd number of protons, has a spin of one. So any nuclei you see, which has odd number of neutrons, odd number of protons, will be having integral spin. 14 has 14N has spin of one in the units of H cross. Uh, carbon, which has uh, even number of neutrons and even number of protons, has spin of zero. And positron and anti-neutrino, they have spin half. So there can be two different scenarios in this case, where the nitrogen nuclei and the anti-neutrino can be anti-aligned. And another scenario would be that these two nuclei, uh, 14N nuclei and anti-neutrino are aligned. So you can see I have written down that if in the anti-aligned case, how the spin will combine. So you can see on the right, on the uh, left-hand side, we have spin of minus one combining with spin of half, which will give me half spin. And on the right-hand side, I have spin of carbon and positron combining to give half. In the aligned case, scenario will be different because 14N will have spin of one, which will combine with anti-neutrino spin to give me a total spin of three by two. But on the right-hand side, we have spin of one by two. So you can see in the very first equation, the spin is getting is getting uh, conserved and it, preferen it preferentially destroys amino acid by turning nitrogen into carbon, okay? So in the anti-aligned case, the nitrogen will be turned to carbon and uh, our uh, amino, amino acid will be destroyed. The second equation is called the first forbidden Gamow-Taylor transition. So the both, both of these equations are the Gamow-Taylor transition, but the second equation is first forbidden and the probability of this equation is lesser than the very first equation. So the anti-aligned case will be the one which, which, will, which will be happening and will be uh, destroying our amino acids. The second equation will be suppressed in nature. Okay. 
So in the research paper, you also have this diagram, which shows the direction of spin of neutrinos and antineutrinos, and also the direction of spin of, uh, sorry, uh, you have this diagram, which, which shows the spin of antineutrinos and also the spin of nitrogen nuclei uh, around the exploding new, uh, neutron star. So as you can see on the upper part, we have spins to be aligned with each other. And on the lower part, we have spins to be anti-aligned with, with, with each other. And we have just seen that in the anti-aligned case, the amino acid will be destroyed. So you can, you can just see that in the down part, the amino acid will be destroyed because uh, the nitrogen nuclei will be aligned uh, because of the magnetic field. But since anti-neutrinos, they always have a definite helicity, their spin will always be always be in the direction of their motion. So you can see if uh, anti-neutron is going up, the, the spin direction will be up. And if the anti-neutron is going down, the spin direction will be down. But still, it, it does not tell us why we have the chirality dependent uh, destruction of amino acids. So for this, we need to move to the Buckingham effect. And according to the Buckingham effect, it says that in the presence of strong external electric, and magnetic field, a, a, a chirality dependent alignment in opposite direction is observed. Okay. So, and such alignment is essential for the SNAP model to work because we need the D amino acids and L amino acid to align differently in the magnetic field. So that's why they can be distorted in nature. So in this diagram, I've just showed you uh, that we have a neutron star and its, its magnetic field is pointing in the up direction. Okay. And you can again see the direction of, of spin for anti-neutrinos to be pointing in the direction of their motion. So if neutron is going up, then its, it's spin will be pointing up. And if neutron is going down, its spin, its spin will be pointing down. But on, on the right, you can see D amino acid and L amino acids uh, align in different directions. Let's say the D amino acid is, it is pointing in the direction of, of magnetic field, and L amino acid is pointing against the direction of the magnetic field. Okay. So what you will observe is that uh, at the 14 n spin, which is the nitrogen spin, when it is anti-aligned with anti-neutrino, will be will be destroyed. So you can see that in the upper part we will be having D amino acids left, and in the lower part we will be having L amino acids left. But still, the question question comes up that why we are having uh, an asymmetric uh, population of, uh, of 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 chirality that we have more of L amino acids, and why do we why do we, why do we do not have i mean both d amino acids and l amino acids equally and also one more question is from where are we getting electric field because we were talking about magnetic fields but now here we are getting electric fields so the first question that from where we are getting the electric field uh, okay so there's some question on uh, slide number 13 that why in slide 13, both particles are in the same direction and other particle has different direction. Let me go back to slide 13 and quickly see this thing. Both particles are in the same direction and other particle has different direction. So uh, Hansaka, are you trying to talk about? Uh, so Hansaka has asked me a question. Yes. Hello. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, in slide 13, can you tell me why the you there's a diagram and the upper side has the same direction as b n and s delta the in but mm -hmm. in the side southern side it has a opposite can you tell me about that okay so what actually mark. what actually has, has happened here that the spin of the nitrogen uh -huh. is aligned with respect to the magnetic field which is pointing up uh -huh. Uh -huh. but then because the but because the neutrinos they always have their spin in the direction of their motion so mm -hmm. uh if neutrinos are going are, uh, let's say they are uh, emitted in the upward direction, their spin will be pointing up. But, uh -huh. uh, if neutrinos are emitted in the downward direction, their spin will be pointing downwards, but this is not the case with the nitrogen nuclei. Uh -huh. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so here we saw that there was a uh, destruction of D amino acids and L amino acid. Uh, now the two question which we were talking about was about electric fields and how we can get how we can get homochirality. First of all, uh, the electric field is experienced by molecules moving in a magnetic field by the translational Stark effect. 
I hope you all are familiar with this uh, equation, which we read in our electrodynamics that electric field will be the uh, will be equal to the product of velocity and magnetic field. Here, V M is the velocity of our metroid, and E T S is the electric field due to the translate uh, translational Stark effect. So this is this is from where we are getting the electric field. Also, if the anti-neutrino fluxes were same on both sides, then homochirality was not possible. But this is not found to be the case in strong magnetic field of star. What has been found that the fluxes are different, so you can get some sort of uh, uh, imbalance in the population of L amino acids and D amino acids. Also, this imbalance in chiral state selection is amplified by a process called autocatalysis, and we will eventually res uh, this will eventually result in a homochirality or e to be one. Now, this model has predicted the maximum e of 0.02 percent, which is dominated by left-handed alanine alanine molecules. So, alanine molecule is one of the type of amino acid which we which we get on Earth, and this molecule has been considered in this in this study. Uh, now we have the overview, which is the which is the discussion, which has been uh, which is the last part of this research paper. Uh, so the model predicts chiral selective interaction of anti-neutrinos with non-zero spin nuclei. Also, nitrogen nucleus was the nucleus of choice in alanine because uh, um, studied in this work because it has a relatively large nucleus spin. So carbon and oxygen they have spin zero and they will not be affected in this model. But and hydrogen we have on in in amino acids, and hydrogen has less uh, nuclear spin and it won't affect any chirality selection. So that's why nitrogen was selected in this research paper. Now the paper also uh, selects uh, talks about four important things which are necessary for this model to work. First is the external magnetic field to align the nuclear spin. Uh, second is the electric field to produce to provide the chirality dependent alignment of molecules. Third is anti neutrino interaction, so they can selectively destroy the, the nuclei of a particular spin state. And at the very end, we have nitrogen nucleus having non zero spin because only the non zero spin uh, nuclei are getting affected in this in this uh, in this chirality selection. Uh, so this was all like uh, in the in the research paper we have the discussion part and this was all from this research paper at the very end i have some uh, update on astrobiology uh, and i have update from the Na nasa's mars 2020 perseverance and uh, very recently on 18th february at 3:55 pm nasa's land rover named perseverance it landed on mars and it covered a journey of about 300 million miles it took it around 300 days to 203 days to reach the red planet uh, the, the rover will be the the mission of the rover will be to search for signs of ancient martian life and this will be a big step for the science and also in particular to astrobiology and on the right you have picture shared by the rover right after its, its touchdown so you can see the image of of how the mars looks like and who knows the martian may be left-handed too so this is something we will be finding out and this was all from my side. So thank you. And if you have any questions, then you can you can just let me know. I can I I, I will try to answer all these questions. Wow. Um. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shiva. That was a a, a good overview. Uh. Very 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 good. I mean, if we're in a live audience, people would give you a standing an ovation. Yeah. So. It's, it seems like uh, Dr. Femiano did not uh, join us uh, to help us with the discussion. So uh, you can direct all questions to Shiva. Yep. Uh, if you have a question, you can raise up your hand or just unmute yourself. Uh, I guess we're small groups. So we don't really need too much structure. Uh, anybody with any question? Uh, question has some question. So I have a question. I mm -hmm. read that in the paper it mentions that so I got the concept that we are trying to hypothesize what are the reasons for left-handed chirality to dominate, right? And the goal of the paper says two questions to be answered. One, 
what is the initial thing that creates the imbalance and then they are just stating that once that imbalance is created mm -hmm. uh saying let's say more left-handed were created versus right-handed then that is going to just accelerate left-handed ones leaving right-handed way far behind so my first question is what theory or like what on what basis are you able to say that once the imbalance is created it is going to just accelerate in that direction uh, so for this we have uh, we have something called auto catalysis uh, if you have an imbalance then the nature is uh, selecting only that high population uh, uh, of handedness if let's say we have left-handed more with respect to right-handed, then nature is selecting the left-handed ones. And this is called autocatalysis, which is also mentioned in the paper. Yeah, so, I mean, I understand that it is because of autocatalysis, but why, do we have a reason for why? Um, I don't think this reason has, has been mentioned, but uh, we'll have to re read more on, on autocatalysis to read about this thing. Okay. But you know that if we have more of one uh, handedness, then it gets amplified because of this yeah, process. Yeah, that I got it. But so I was trying to, and I know it is because of autocatalysis, but I was trying to ask if you had a reason why that happens. Uh, no, I think I, I'll have to read more on this thing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that question, Kushi. Um, anyone else who has a question? Oh, yes, uh, go ahead, Will. So, um, the left or right handedness is decided by uh, the magnetic field that it's uh, kind of created in with the neutron star, right? Um, uh, <laughs> um, so, the reason that it happens with a neutron star is because it has such a high magnetic or such a great magnetic field, right? So, like, what order of magnitude, how or how strong is that magnetic field where it's able to change this uh, handedness or set this handedness? Because, um, I mean, clearly it wouldn't be able to happen uh, on Earth. We couldn't do it ourselves by accident. So, the, actually, uh, <clears throat> um, what, we, what we are trying to see here is that if I can share my slides again, I can show you. Uh, that there will be two different types of uh, amino acids which will be created, but because of the magnetic field, the alignment will be will be there. So even though the even though we we have both L amino acids and D amino acids, we have both N isomers, but their arrangement in the magnetic field is important. So th so that the interaction can destroy one form of amino acids. Uh, and uh, also the research papers mentions different sorts of magnetic field, their, their, uh, their strength. And based on this strength, finally, we have the maximum EE of 0.02%. So if magnetic field changes, then this number will change. This maximum EE will, will, will change. And I'm not sure if there is any threshold on this magnetic field, but, uh, but certainly with the magnetic field, this number will, will, be, will be different. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Will, for that question. Uh, uh, it seems like uh, Dr. Fumiano has joined us. Uh, hi. hi. Yeah, hi. Sorry, this wasn't on my calendar. I don't know what happened, and then I compl completely blanked on this. Sorry, guys. Uh, you're good. You're good. It's, it's signs that you're maturing well in age. <laughs> <laughs> well, maturing poorly, it sounds like. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you. Um, yeah, any other question, anyone else? So I have a question on this slide. Um, so you say the molecule uh, is moving in a magnetic field. Uh, is this like a charge? Because um, um, otherwise it wouldn't. So um, it won't be a charge uh, molecule or because of the electronic orbitals of the of the molecules. The molecule has uh, 
because we have two different things we have the nuclei and we have the molecule then mo molecule has electronic orbitals and their distribution of the electrons is different and because of this uh, distribution we have different densities of uh, electrons on different sides of the of the molecule and in the motion of if we have motion in the magnetic field then the electric field will be uh, experienced by the by the molecule so it's because of the electronic orbitals and their densities um, more like something like a dipole is is formed yeah uh, yes thank you uh and you say like you 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 guys are working on creating this in the lab right yes yeah, so there is an experiment which is mentioned which will be to test this this model and so this is what the the research the main research will be okay any any good news so far or uh, i'm still i'm still in the process of uh, getting updates so once uh, maybe let's say i'm associated more and then i'll be getting more updates on this on the experimental how the experiment will be going about like with the nmr and everything thank you thank you anyone else who have uh, questions you can now go fully technical uh, dr Femiano is here i'm sure he can handle Kushi, you still have your hand raised up or? I'm sorry, I'll pull it back down. I have already asked my question, sorry. Okay, um, well, if uh, nobody else has a question, I, I, I have, I have uh, a lot of the questions, they are basic. You talked about in your talk that the reason why the nitrogen was selected was because of its spin and why the magnetic field does not affect the carbon and oxygen. Is that what you said? Yes, like because carbon, carbon, and, carbon and oxygen, they have zero spin, so they will not be affected. Mm -hmm. But oh, okay. uh, we have hydrogen and, and nitrogen, which have spin, which do not have zero spin. But hydrogen is not uh, making much of the, you know, hydrogen is not doing that much of uh, uh, effect on the chirality selection. Okay. Uh, that, that makes sense. All right. Anyone else with any questions? I, I think maybe it would be nice uh, some next time for the presenter to have questions for the audience. I, I asked one question. Are you left-handed or right-handed? Oh, well, no, yeah, that one we've answered. Yeah. yeah. And with that question, probably like uh, if you are asking in terms of dexterity, then we all are right-handed. You didn't specify which right-handedness or left-handedness you were talking about. If you asked what chirality of proteins you have or what chirality of amino acids you have that mm -hmm. might have given you the right answer. <laughs> yeah, I mean. okay. uh, one question, okay, just a hypothesis maybe, but like you talked about the, like when there is weak interaction and due to chirality, there is the death of protein, right? I mean, decompose or something like that one time. So, uh, surplus and the other one died. You, you mentioned something like that, right? Uh, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. I was, I was thinking like because when anybody go to do uh, MRI, so there mm -hmm. is also the presence of uh, huge magnetic field, and in our body DNA has the sequence of Van der Waal. I mean, it's a Van der Waal uh, effect. I mean, there is a Van der Waal force present in, in the sequencing of DNA. So will the be any kind of impact i don't know but i was just curious on that kind of thing uh, i could not understand like uh, dna are, are we trying to relate dna with the i uh, mean uh, amino acids i mean, I mean uh, yes because it's a sequence of protein right i mean it's a sequence of protein and then the there is the vulnerable interaction in dna right and then 
uh, when when uh, you go for MRI, there the there will be the presence of magnetic field as well, and you will have the weak interaction as well in your body, protein, and I, I was just thinking that kind of effect, if you can get something like that, death of any protein in the body or something. Um, Maybe Dr. Mike can help me understand this. I don't know. Yeah, I can comment on it. Uh, um, okay. So, so the, um, the effect in this paper is, is re really very much an emergent phenomenon of, of multiple <gasps> physical effects and, and um, there, there's a lot going on that in, in many cases wouldn't occur on the surface of the earth or it would occur very very slowly on the surface of the earth so there's there's two things we're relying on um, for, for this to work what one is uh, um, either uh, uh, very intense fluxes of leptons um, and that, that that we can find all over the place in, in stellar environments. And the other one uh, is a very intense magnetic field. You can find those. Um, you can have one or the other for this to work, or you can have both for this to work. If you, if you have one or the other, then um, a lot of times what what you need to rely on is, is time, which, which is something the uni universe gives has plenty of. Uh, it just takes a very long time for for this to happen, and, and that's that's quite feasible. Um, and it's quite possible it happened on the sur surface of the Earth prior to or, or just after the last meteoric bombardment. Um, when you go for an MRI, it, it's, it's happening, but uh, <clears throat> it's happening so slowly that that it, 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 your 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 body basically corrects for it. Um, and that, that's the one thing that, that we're really not doing here. We're not doing biology. Uh, as much as we like to tell people we're doing biology, we're, um, and unfortunately, our knowledge of biology is, is pretty low here in the physics world. Um, in fact, our knowledge of biochemistry is, is pretty low here in the physics world. We're, we're doing our best here. Um, and so we're, we're really looking at the fundamental things. Uh, the effect very much is an effect is an MRI type effect. In fact, the first experiment we want to um, measure with this is actually to simulate this environment in an NMR device. Uh, we won't be having the lepton flux that we need, but but that's okay. I mean, we we know the universe gives us a lepton flux either in stellar environments or or in things like cosmic rays. Should also add, we're not the only ones doing this business here. There are other theories. Uh, including circularly polarized light. Um, there's also other theories of, of, of uh, lepton interactions from cosmic rays. Uh, um, some some nice papers out there. Uh, Noemi Globus and, and Blanford um, from, I believe, Caltech wrote a paper recently, which was okay. Uh, it, it's a little vague in, in the mechanism, but, but uh, the math is actually pretty compelling. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Um, are there any other questions uh, before we uh, discuss uh, grad student opportunities? And in the meanwhile, uh, please, I've sent a survey in the chat. Uh, if you haven't filled that survey, please uh, fill it. We really want to make sure that the general club um, delivers in its goals, uh, giving you value for your time. We don't want to just take your time one hour every month and uh, it's not valuable. So please uh, fill the survey. Tell us what you think. Tell us how we can improve and all of those things. All right. So any one last question before... Um, I just clicked the link and it brought me to the, uh, the page, but it, uh, it has October, November, and January as options. It doesn't have February as an option. Oh, oh yeah. Cause it was created a long time ago. It was created before today. Uh, That's good. Okay. I just want, uh, should I just click January then? 
Uh, I, I guess, yeah, you can click January. That's fine. Okay, sounds good. Oh, oh can you update it, Shiva? Uh, yes, I can, I can, I can do that. Okay, I will be doing it, so it's fine. Okay, well, I guess now I, let me just quickly present to you. Uh, there are just a couple of opportunities for grad students. We will all want you to succeed and be the best version of yourself. Let me see if I, yeah, okay. You guys can see my screen. Now what I want to do is to present. Oh, okay, it's presenting in the wrong screen. All right. Um, yeah, so you guys have seen most of this uh, it's, has been uh, talked about last time. Just a couple of deadlines, a reminder. If you are interested in the graduate student research grant, you can get up to $1,000. Please, the deadline is coming up March 3rd. If you want to know um, how to apply for this, Kushi can help you. She has won it a couple of times, and I think she will be going for more. And uh, uh, same similar thing, there are other grants. You can just click on the link and uh, just look at different fellowship grants and stuff like that. Um, similar thing for other uh, grants. You can see the deadlines is all coming up in March. Yeah, um, one is coming up very soon, two days from now. So if you're interested in that one, Christian has won it. So you can contact him and he can help you with those application. And um, I actually wanted to show you if you are now closer to finishing your PhD and you're looking for postdoc, you can go to nature and you just go to uh, nature.com careers and I can just show you if, uh, if this will open. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, so you basically, if you get here, you can search for PhD uh, postdoc uh, in the wherever you want, and you can see different ones that are listed there, and you can click physics there. And uh, so it's a pretty nice uh, resource if you didn't know about it. Um, so now you know. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's it on that section. And another thing, if you are interested in quantum computing, as I am, there's a conference coming up this uh, this Saturday. It's actually a free conference, so you can uh, join. Uh, I'll show you the page. The page looks like this, diversity in quantum computation. If you want to uh, have any questions, you can contact me. And please, because um, we are all in different fields, if you know any conferences in your field, please send it so that we can share with everybody. Particularly now, many conferences are virtual, so many people can join uh, pretty much easily. Yeah. And also, I uh, for those who will be writing comprehensive exams pretty soon, you may want to revise your linear algebra. There's uh, this video series called The Essence of Linear Algebra. I'll send you the link, uh, pretty much what it looks like. It looks like this. This is how the page looks like. Yeah, so um, it gives you a visual intuition of what linear algebra is about so that you can understand the math and see uh, where that comes from graphically. So I would recommend this page. You can see like I, I really, really watched all of those videos and it helps if you're taking notes as well because the concepts, they stick much better. Uh, yeah, and also with that, another page which I recommend is Via Science. So Via Science actually is now has much more. Uh, so it has a series in quantum mechanics. Well, you may be interested in field theory, um, series on relativity, series on thermodynamics. And basically these videos, they are not a lecture. They just give you the more intuition behind all of the concepts that you are learning. If you like, it's more like an abstract overview of the whole 
um, whatever series you'll be interested in, mechanics, thermodynamics, whatever. So I recommend these pages. And what else do I recommend? I guess uh, those are my recommendations. Let's see. Uh, yeah, the last thing, please fill the survey. And as I said, please let us know if you find any opportunities you want to share with other grad students, just send us an email. And we are working on uh, having these recorded talks on the department website, so you can always watch them and, and get to see those slides there. Uh, we'll be finishing that very, very soon, hopefully. But yeah, otherwise, uh, are there any questions? Are there any questions or comments? Hey, hey I uh, see some new names here, um, sp specifically Abby and William. Are you guys first year grad students? I'm a first year Miles, um, physics enrollment student. Then William, are you first year? Uh, no, I'm the same year as Shiva, but I'm also a uh, Miles and physics. Uh, okay. Combination student. Okay, great, great. Yeah, just just like to know who everybody is. Here, are are there first year students here? Um, put put your thumbs. Give, give me a thumbs up if you're a first year student. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, I am first year student. Oh, okay, okay, great. All right, good. Yeah, it's good. Good to know who's who. Thanks, guys. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, please join me to thank Shiva. Thank you, Dr. Femiano, and thank you everyone for joining. See you in the next general club. Yes, uh, and please email us if you interested to present. Kim, don't be quiet. And we we encourage everybody to. to All right, thank you guys. Thank you, good job, and thanks. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, everyone, for for, for joining today. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. Okay, See you next month. <laughs> See you. Bye -bye. Hey, man, go back. You gone? Okay. <laughs>